Hey, BIS301. Um, just to let you know, the last take I did, I said I wanted to do it in one take and got halfway through it and realized that my AirPods weren't on. I didn't have them on. And um, I always think the sound is really going to be bad. So I'm hoping this is better. All right. So um, welcome to module well, module three video. Uh, I hope these are helpful to you. Um, I uh, want to make it worth your while. I know it's only five points, but I hope you get some clarity and things from this. If you're having any trouble, again, any any spinning your wheels, any, any confusion, shoot me an email. Um, if you want to set up a call, I'm glad to do it. I have uh, availability through phone. I got different apps to use, of course, if you're not in the U.S. or anything, you want to do that. And uh, I'm definitely willing to help you on a one-on-one -on -one basis when necessary, okay? Um, let's just do some general housekeeping on this. Uh, okay, so uh, add your section number to any correspondence and the papers. Just helps that there's, remember there's four section numbers. So I'd like you to make sure that you uh, add those, your correct one, all right? So I can keep everything organized better. And um, again, if you don't, you know, I'm not mad because, you know, this is <laughs> this is my deal putting them all together. Anyways, um, okay, uh, the, the discussion board um, citations, okay? You don't have to do citations at the discussion board, okay? Unless you're pulling in some outside work that you don't wanna plagiarize, of course, and um, you're gonna use it's really pertinent then okay, fine. But really, I'm not expecting to see citations in discussion boards. It's really, chances are it's not going to add a lot to the discussion. Um, and then also, uh, especially, you know, you know, use the text, you know, cite the text. Okay, you really don't. I mean, if you're quoting them directly, just, you know, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, but when you do citations, please try to do them correctly. Okay. Um, it's not like horseshoes, you don't know, like get close to the right way and then that's good enough. Um, you know, citations come at the end of the sentence, but before the punctuation, okay? Um, so they're after the quote or after the context, uh, reference, whatever. And in parentheses, you got your, you know, author's name, comma, space, year, space, page number in there, whatever. Um, don't start the next sentence with your citation from the last sentence, okay? It just kind of hangs there and it, it, it's not right. Okay. So, um, uh, that's one thing I want you <clears throat> to, um, sorry, focus on, uh, <clears throat> if you have trouble with those citations, please use the uh, link to, uh, Purdue owl that I have on, uh, blackboard and just go to APA, which is there. And then just look at the pertinent things. It'll show you how to do anything in terms of citations. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. And, uh, as far as, um, you know, names, like I said, on the file name, put your name on the file name when you upload a paper, name should be on there. I want your section number in the on the paper, okay? No cover sheets necessary, okay? Um, there's no cover sheet required in this entire class for any paper, just so you know that, forget about that, okay? Um, you won't get dinged if you have one, you won't really, you won't add any points if you have one either, so, you know, what's the point, right? All right, um, and then uh, on the worksheets, okay, so, you know, answer each question. Uh, it's okay to use the worksheet as a template and just use the response and your question and response, question, answer, and go through them that way. That's fine. It saves me a lot of time to try to match up a narrative and see if the, this sentence, if you covered certain points, uh, and it gets to be kind of blurry. And after reading, you know, a hundred of them, you just kind of get a little punchy there to, to do that. So it really helps me to stay organized and probably help you to stay organized too. And you can do it that way, okay? Um, also, you know, like, so don't like post the questions in the top and the narrative on the bottom. I still, you know, it's like a matching game then. And I just soon you just do it that way. That way, you know, you're covered. Okay. For answering all the questions. All right. Uh, let's see what else. Mm -mm. All right. I think that's about it on housekeeping. Anyways, uh, let's go into the worksheets themselves, uh, about, okay. I'm getting some good responses. Great. Um, some of you, you know, write a lot in each prompt. That's fine. Some of you write a little bit. That can be fine too, because as I've told a couple people and my my feedback is that hey, you got in, you made your point, and you got out. Okay, that's fine. All right, it is. Okay, there's a difference between being shallow and brief and not saying anything or just throwing words together, and there is just making a concise 
statement. Okay. So I don't want it to, I don't want everybody to drill it down to one sentence, of course, but I want you to feel comfortable with doing what works for you and not try to add words because you think length counts or something. Okay. All right. Um, just try to make your points and, uh, and that, and, uh, okay. So, all right. Um, the prompts and things I want, I want them to start getting you to think like an interdisciplinarian. So, you know, we'll go over some of those things, but uh, remember interdisciplinary studies. What did I say on, let's see, the first video at the five minute mark and the second video at five and a half and eight and a half, because you guys made me watch my videos again and that was brutal. Okay, so, um, and I don't get any points for that. So I mentioned the I word, right? The integration. Integration is the key, all right? I think it's the easiest way to conceptualize interdisciplinary study. It's integration of the disciplines, okay? Um, there's still some people that I think uh, think of it as multidisciplinary, you know? There's no integration. It's just like, hey, I have the best of both worlds. You know, you really don't, but <laughs> I, know how you, I know what you mean. Um, you uh, uh, are endeavoring to integrate, okay? And I know I've, I've given that out enough and emphasized that the people that don't watch the videos, wow, they, they always get a shock, I guess. But you guys do, so that's great. Um, so, you know, integration is like I've said it. Oh, it's close to my heart, you know. Uh, that means you're getting it because you, you're going to move on in interdisciplinary studies knowing that integration is the key element. Okay. Um, all right. Got that. Let's see. Looking at interdisciplinary studies again and, and some of the issues and the topics or problems uh, that we have that we can look at through an interdisciplinary lens. Um, things like politics, food, the world, okay, those aren't issues or problems that interdisciplinary study can analyze, solve, or mitigate. Um, food shortage, starvation, those are, okay. The divisive nature of politics in the 21st century, yeah. That's something that interdisciplinary states. So I'm challenging you to take it deeper, okay? I'm challenging you to step up your game and think of it, you know, because otherwise you really could say anything, you know? I mean, here, my AirPods, we can look at this through interdisciplinary studies, right? I mean, maybe you could, I guess, because you got the ergonomics factor that fits on mine and, uh, and whatever, but you know what I'm getting at, okay? So I want you to just consider... Um, what this is so that you can better articulate it when it comes to career opportunities and things like that, showing why you're better positioned to take on a challenge. Okay. All right. And uh, let's see. All right. All right. And it's not a double major. It's not a major minor. It's, you know, interdisciplinary. Okay. In fact, I was just at the hospital, as you know, last week and I'm feeling much better. Thanks a lot. Um, and uh, I don't know, it was, the air, it was, it was a plane ride and I don't know. It just triggered high blood pressure. Anyways, so I'm good. And, um, but when I was at the hospital, it's so weird because I, um, I guess I'm always thinking about things like this. So let me see if I can find this. Cause I wanted to show you this, you guys, I saw this in the, um, in the hospital. Hopefully you can see this. Let's see. Is that backwards? I hope not. Okay. It says hospitalists. All right. Now that's, Oh, and a text from my son. There you guys go. Okay. Um, so uh, hospitalists. I was thinking, wow, that's a that's kind of a 21st century term. I I think. I mean, I'm not in the hospital enough to know that, but you know, looking into that, you know, what they cover is a, like a holistic view of all the factors in patient care. Okay, in the hospital, and that's definitely interdisciplinary style career. Okay, it's someone that needs to know things about. Uh, probably about, you know, things that revolve around the compassion, the psychology, the sociology, uh, those kind of things, as well as the medical parts of it, of course. And then there's economics and the financial way that a patient, the things that the patients deal with. OK, so there's a lot of different things in a hospitalist. Well, I hope I'm right. No, I looked it up. I think that's what they do. Right. OK, but that's exactly what I thought was a good example. All right. Remember, I was. I was sedated. No. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, let's look at, uh, I just want to take a quick look at the objectives for the course. Okay. So I don't get too far off the base. All right. So you got IDS core knowledge. Okay. Demonstrate and explain the following terms, academic disciplines, disciplinary, cross-disciplinary, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, and transdisciplinary. 
gain awareness of the history, background, and context of interdisciplinary studies. Okay, the important part of that to me is the intra, cross, multi, inter, and transdisciplinary focuses that you can uh, that, that one could take as, a, as an academic or an analyst. Um, obviously, in interdisciplinary studies, we should have that, right? It's integrating. It's integration, okay? Uh, let's start down with the intra. That's just one single discipline. Okay, that somebody you know who studies one discipline, and that's great. Okay, um, cross disciplinary—that's a tricky one. I know it is. Okay, and again, one of the best examples I've given is I've found is that um, looking at music through a discipline of mathematics. Okay, uh, you can see that you're kind of going through one discipline, looking at the other one. So some of you had some really great um, examples in your committee. And uh, and I really like that you're 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 sharp on on how they would look at different things. Um, also, uh, in in the committee exercise, I want you to think of that differently because and most of you did, I guess. But just to make sure we're clear, um, a committee could be make up made up of you know let's say any academics at this point or, or occupations. We talked about that, but these individuals, you know. We're not are not expected to be interdisciplinary interdisciplinarians. Okay, it is the process of what they're going through to be an interdisciplinary committee, which means that at the end of the day, they're trying to integrate, right? Whereas the multidisciplinary committee is going to each do their own thing, whether it's architecture or uh, econ economics or uh, sustainability, and then they're going to probably report. To maybe one person or one other body, and then that body might look at all those things. But it's always multidisciplinary. It's never integrating. Okay, there's some subtle differences there, and and I know. But in terms of articulating it, and and that's what you know, it might be one of those things that I know it when I see it. You know, so. Uh, but that's one thing to think at beforehand. Okay, uh, so intro one cross looking through, multi is just inter disciplinary and then uh, transdisciplinary of course is, is this goes goes beyond okay now it just means that it can look at the problem first then go down and look at solutions to um, particular problems with any means necessary any occupation any anyone involved in it okay it's not strictly an academic exercise um, the uh, I forget what I was gonna say about that one oh there, it's a hierarchy, but it doesn't mean one's better than the last one. It just means that, you know, it's a different way to do it. And it's a pyramid, I think, because there's more intradisciplinarians than there are transdisciplinary things to look at, okay? Now, cross, I don't know how that works in there, but um, it's not better to be transdisciplinary. It's not worse to be multidisciplinary. It's just different, okay? All right. And uh, let's see. Um, all right. So, I mean, this is, I'm just saying I'm going to work on this core knowledge that you guys get, which you're supposed to get out of this course. And you can move on. Um, your concentration area, knowledge of disciplines. OK, we're getting on that. Um, interdisciplinary and in, interdisciplinarity in applied settings. OK, so that's like I'm talking about the hospitalists or what you may endeavor to do. OK, in integrating uh, your concentrations into a more of a single singular unit there. Okay. And we'll get all, we'll continue to get through that. And then personal and career development, um, assess individual strengths and opportunities for improvement with respect to future settings and increasingly interdisciplinary workplaces. Okay. You can read that. But, um, uh, again, it's, it's, it's all about your career. I mean, I don't think you want to go to school forever. Um, although that'd be fun, right? Just, um, uh, uh, Look at what your career means to to you in terms of interdisciplinarity and and how you can take advantage of that or your, your goals. Okay, um, any questions, comments, concerns about that? Let me know. Okay, uh, now I'm going to look at module three here. I didn't get discussion boards for two yet, but I wanted to get this out to you asap. Things are looking good. Like I said, um, looks like most people turned it in, which is great. Okay, module three: pros and cons of interdisciplinary studies and um, the important parts. You can handle the readings, okay. I like this Benson, five arguments against IDS because he takes the devil's advocate position against it. 
and it's going to be things that you've probably considered or definitely heard of. And, and it's a nice article to think about it, those terms. All right. And then conversely, the case for interdisciplinary studies is also a good one to come back. It's kind of a response to Benson. OK, uh, in our IDS uh, uh, DB3, it's a debate. Um, I want you to. Uh, uh, OK, it's a scenario. It's basically an imaginary university. And they're talking about a new interdisciplinary studies program. And, uh, and such, and there's details around that. And there's a great controversial article. I know it's getting old, but it's really good from a, I think it's from a professor, yeah, Dr. Kostelich in ASU years ago, and there was a rebuttal, and then it was a response um, to that. Check those out, because again, those are things that we run into on a regular basis, and they help you to articulate, well, why are you doing this, okay? Um, why don't you just take an economics and be done with it, right? But this is good to hear this, okay? So read about that. Plagiarism unit. Plagiarism is huge. It's really tough. And, you know, I've actually had a couple of students that got a um, a uh, bad grade for and got, uh, you know, for plagiarizing really blatantly. Um, we do submit our work. You're going to submit your work through um, uh, safe assign, which means I'll be able to see if your paper, any parts of it match up to other papers out there, like millions of them. And, um, uh, you know, just try your best to avoid that and just to use citations when possible. OK, but these are good exercises because a lot of us as students didn't get this background on plagiarism and you can see what's going on there. All right. And uh, there's a plagiarism quiz. OK, please try to do the material, the work before you actually. Um, now, there's a there's like a fun quiz in there. It's really so it's I know it's lame. OK, stop it. Uh but it's, I think that's what it is. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's actually interesting though. It just, it just gets it in you, you know, and for you video gamers, you're going to just laugh, but you know, great. All right. So, um, the quiz, then you've got the, uh, the meat of the week and that's the intellectual autobiography assignment. Are we, am I getting dark or light here? Sorry about that. Let's see what's going on here. Um, well, that is a, um, the intellectual autobiography is an autobiography that you're going to write about yourself, but this doesn't, this isn't like, you know, had a Batman birthday party when I was eight. Okay. So even though I did, okay. <laughs> um, but read the, the material, look at the rubric or the format and the rubrics and things. And uh, I want to know, I want you to try to think about some of the major events or occurrences, minor, major, whatever, influences that you had academically okay to get you to where you are academically what are those uh situations that informed you in such a way that you became a, a student yourself okay right now and beyond okay so it's intellectual let me know if you have any questions about it i know the first question i'm going to get is how long should it be um i'm not a not overly concerned about word count okay uh, there's a rubric, I think, so you'll be able to follow that pretty close. Um, yeah, there's a rubric. What am I saying? Okay. And and, and you can follow that. It's in the text. Um, what else do I just want to say about this? I think that's about it. I've, I've had some really interesting ones. Um, people get creative. There are two different ways to do it. 99.9% .9 of you are going to write the paper, and that's excellent. Okay. The 1% that decides to go off off roading and um and do the creative one it's a challenge because essentially you do almost have to write it and then do something with it okay so i had a a, a young lady from uh, barrett last semester who honestly blew me away and um i should maybe post that but it just blew me away okay um it was so good uh, it was a video and it was about eight minutes and uh, but she essentially she had to write the paper before she did this video. It was basically just, you know, scenes, collage, photos and video. And and um, wow, it really I mean, I sent it to our dean, Rowan, um, and he was so happy to see that as well. I just think that it was uh, that that one I never expect to be surpassed. But um, uh, it, it's, it's taken on that challenge to uh, 
create something different. Okay. And it's up to you. Trust me. You can score really, really well, complete hundred percent, whatever on a paper, no problem. Okay. That's due September 6th. Oh, great. You got a three day weekend, right? Um, okay. So where am I at? 20 minutes and I made a promise. All right. And I didn't do any, any Easter eggs did I? You guys are going, where's the Easter eggs? All right. So here's what we're going to do. The Easter egg for this video is no Easter eggs. Just send me that. No Easter eggs. Okay. And I'll see how bad that turns out. All right, you guys. Um, thanks again for your efforts. And you got a lot on your plate. And uh, let me know, if, like I said, anything I can do. All right. Peace out. Forks up.